You are listening to You and the Truth, where we will give you the truth face to face. Now what you do with it is up to you. A criminal is a criminal, but there are criminals and there are criminals. And a crime is a crime, but again, there are crimes and there are crimes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to You and the Truth. In today's episode, it's time to ante up. Now, I believe the most heinous crime a person can commit is molesting a child. This is the only crime for which I would consider the death penalty. It's only my love and respect for God that keeps me from advocating it. So, with that off the table, as far as I'm concerned, these sickos should never see the light of day again, and societal rehabilitation isn't an option. Perhaps, if remorseful enough, they can be forgiven by God. But that's between them and their maker. From my human perspective, that's their only chance. A close second is abusing another human being. Now, being a male, I look at things through a man's lens. Now, that may sound like a given, but in today's culture, I don't think I'm overstating the obvious. I was raised to respect all people, especially women. As a young man, I saw nothing but love and respect from my father to my mother. Just the thought of a man taking advantage of a woman in any way, shape, or manner makes me sick. I'll even take it a step further. When I see a scene in a movie that involves physical or sexual abuse or rape, it literally makes me sick to my stomach. I've always wondered how someone can feel pleasure in abusing someone. Know, either verbally or physically, or even so much as touching another without their consent. And even with consent, how a man can feel pleasure in not being gentle with another person, especially a woman, it's beyond me. It's unfathomable. Now, that sounds sexist, anti-feminist, or any other ist society has come up with. Well, so be it. I believe that all people, especially women, should be treated with kindness and respect. You know, that's a loaded subject, but for now, I'd like to keep it in the context of mental or emotional abuse, although abuse is abuse. Now, I've never personally been abused, but I do know people who have, either mentally, physically, sexually, or a combination thereof. So everything I say from this point forward comes not from personal experience, but from the experiences of others. But that said, and with all due respect to those who have suffered trauma such as these, I feel for the first time in my life, I have been violated. Not physically, but mentally and emotionally. And if you're an American citizen and you were to take the time to reflect, there's a very real possibility that you may feel the same way. When you put your trust in someone and that person violates that trust, well, where do you go from there? Now, I believe in forgiveness but everything has a limit, at least from a human standpoint. The only one who has unlimited forgiveness is God. Of course, if you don't believe in the God of the Holy Bible or another God that advocates forgiveness, then you probably don't have to deal with the issue of forgiveness as Christians do. But if your God is the God of the Holy Bible, forgiveness is not only a big issue, it is the issue. Now, with that said, Regardless of how Christian we wish to be or strive to be, as humans, well, you know what I mean. So I ask you, how many times can someone betray your trust before you say, enough is enough? How many times can someone lie to you or stab you in the back until you decide it's time to rebel or turn the page and move on? I venture to say that every human being that has ever walked the face of the earth has suffered from this dilemma. So where do you draw the line? I love analogies. But let's take it down a notch by using an an analogy I hope you can all wrap your heads around. How many times does a burglar have to ransack your home or business before you make him pay? How many times does your child or loved one have to steal your money or personal belongings to support a drug habit before you step in? Once again, everything has a limit. And the only one who sets that limit is you, me, us collectively. Now, I've reached that limit with our elected officials. And I don't think I'd be that far off by saying that millions of Americans feel the same way. 
enough is enough. Folks, it's time to move on. And it's not only time to move on, it's time to make these congressional criminals pay up. Time for them to pay for what they've done because everything has a limit. Everything has a price. Everything. In short, it's time to ante up. Many people want to go to heaven, but very few are willing to die to get there. But that's another topic for another day. Regarding the subject before us, our elected officials, with very few exceptions, have been abusing us both mentally and emotionally for decades. We've handed them our lives and those of our families, children, and loved ones as far back as I can remember. And they've done nothing but lie, cheat, and steal from us. And we keep coming back for more. How many times can a man beat a woman before she takes a stand? before he's made to pay for his abuse. Well, I believe that now is the time for these politicians and government officials to pay the price for their crimes. Congress is a mafia, a well-synchronized organization that answers only to themselves. And I think most people know that, but they're afraid to say it. They just don't want to say it out loud. If any private citizen or anyone outside their organization did one-tenth of what they do and have done, they would be serving hard time. Of course, that's tough to do when those necessary to convict them are members of the same mafia. Folks, this country's in chaos, out of control, and it's been that way for years. Only now, because of social media, it's out in the open. It's out there for everyone to see. So it's time to start over. But it's not the blueprint we need to replace. No, 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 no. That works just fine. It's those individuals who interpret the blueprint that need to go. They need to be recycled. If not, like any living organism that isn't moving, well, they decompose, they rot, and stink. And with the individuals currently interpreting the blueprint, the stench has reached its pinnacle. So, it's time to recycle them. Hell, we recycle everything else. Why not them? I mean, what have we got to lose? Think about it. That's my take. I'd love to hear yours. So email us at the address below and ring that bell and click on the like and subscribe buttons below so we can continue to bring you the truth. Because remember, what you've just heard is the truth. What you do with it, well, that's up to you. You have just come face to face with the truth. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you will be notified when we drop new episodes.